Here's my Raspberry Pi setup with the BrainCraft hat and the camera and an LED. The LED will light when I show a squirrel. There it goes. Now if I show a pug, it will not light. It will detect it. Yeah, but it will not light up the LED. There it goes. I'll show you how I did it. Alright, the first steps are to get the hardware, get a Raspberry Pi 4, and the BrainCraft hat. And it's uh, fairly straightforward. You just follow this Adafruit uh, tutorial. And uh, once you get to the point where you can get to the bottom of the tutorial and run it and recognize objects like this coffee mug then you can try what I'm going to talk about here but only after you do this really after you get the Adafruit tutorial to work and detect something like a coffee mug um, then you can actually use it to trigger outputs but to do that you have to do pip install gpio0 I'll show you how that works in a little bit um, so here, here's going to be the series of events. So first, you got to figure out. I'll start with the IP address of the Raspberry Pi. Um, you can log into the Pi if you have a mouse and keyboard and monitor set up. You should be able to use the BrainCraft hat um, little screen. And you type ifconfig, it'll tell you the IP address. So then use SSH from your computer. The tool I like for connecting via SSH from your laptop to your Raspberry Pi is PuTTY. So you can download PuTTY and then type in the IP address and then connect. So here we go. In case this tutorial looks daunting, it's actually pretty easy with PuTTY. All you do really is copy and paste everything. You just select copy then right click in putty and it pastes it and then you press enter now it says everything's satisfied because I already did it another module you'll need to install for this program to work and interface with the IO is GPIO0 and you need to install this in the virtual environment So, this is how to install GPIO0 in the virtual environment. Boom. And then that's already all satisfied because I've done that already, but that's how to do it. Otherwise, you'll get some dependency errors. And this module in Python, these are called. This is called a module. All it is is like a library, like when you do uh, include or I think import in some program. Yeah, import I think in Python, uh, you're you're importing the what they call module, but it's just like include in say C or whatever, uh, including a library. So anyway, you want GPIO0 in your virtual environment so that the program can use that module in Python. You want to navigate to wherever your Python file is that runs the AI. And it's, uh, so you can find that, I'll, I'll just show you where that is. It's CD RPI vision, and then tests, OS, and then it's the, uh, now I added a one at the end, but it's the PIT. FT labeled output and then I add the one but you know by default it's uh, without one at the end anyway we can open that up and take a look with the nano editor and I'll just show you all I did here was add a couple lines I added this what else did I do? 
So importing the LED function from the GPIO0 module. We're using output well, GPIO port 21. So that's our output for the LED. I'm using just a little red LED with a, uh, I think it's an 800 ohm resistor. And you, so you want to be careful. You do want to be careful with which output you use because, I mean, for the LED, it doesn't matter too much. But if you had a motor or something else, it, it would matter. But some of the LEDs on the Raspberry Pis do have biases. So there will be a voltage even if you uh, turn the output off by like default. So um, output 21 doesn't have any voltage up by default. That, that's one reason to use this. And then further down in the code here, I'll, I'll, I'll include the code somehow. I'll, I'll link it to you. But all I did was add some if, else if statements here. So whenever the camera sees a squirrel, it thinks it's either a lynx or an Egyptian cat or a fox squirrel or a marmoset. And here I'm doing a little delay of one second. So the LED lights for one second. Otherwise, if it's, say, like a pug or something else, anything else, the LED's off. And then in a few other places, I've made the LED off um, here and here. For example, when the program, I interrupt the program, I uh, want the LED to go off. Anyway, I'll run it here and show you how it looks from the... Uh, to exit from the computer. Crash here. Takes a minute. Gonna hold the squirrel and see what happens onto it for a little while. Okay, it just stopped. It detected it. It thinks the squirrel's all links. Here, it thought it was an Egyptian cat. So if you have a cat uh, near squirrels, uh, this model isn't, this TensorFlow model is not able to um, differentiate between the different uh, classifications. To get out of this, press Control C and then exit to get out of the virtual environment. In the future, um, we're th my friend and I were thinking about adding some kind of relay board like this. So for, I mean, if you look carefully, this connects to a couple different outputs and it looks like output, uh, I think 21 is, yeah, output 21 is one of the options here. So then you don't have to do much could attach like a solenoid to a hose to uh, shoot squirrels off the bird feeder if that's what he wants to do. We'll see, we'll see if we do it. What's cool about this project is you could use this for all kinds of different applications. I mean, you could tune this uh, so to feed your cat if it enters a room to give it a treat. Same with your dog. Um, you could use different outputs. So for example, cat would trigger output GPIO 20, dog would trigger GPIO 21. You could have all kinds of different things. Uh, you could have different GPIO for, you know, detecting a person or a car or whatever. So the sky is kind of the limit with this. This is a neat uh, little demo here and I hope you find this useful. And if you're uh, using this elsewhere and feel like putting out any kind of links in the comment, go for in the comment section, go for it. Thank you for watching.